Hello everyone, welcome to Nintendo Super Podcast. This one is a pre-recorded show, it just kind of worked better with our schedules this time around. However, I should be streaming at 9pm Eastern Time like usual, so check that out. Anyways, we're joined by Brandon from What About Nintendo and Sean from Monolith Gaming. Hello. Say hello guys. I, yeah, hey. of course. <laughs> hello, all you lovely people. So, as you guys know, this is our pre-E3 show. Well, if you don't know, now you do know. It's our pre-E3 show. It's on Tuesday. This is coming out on Sunday. I don't know when you guys will watch this, but hopefully watch it before the show. So you can see your predictions and see what happens and, you know, think about what's going on. So we want to make things a little interesting, a little exciting, and we're going to do things a little differently now. You can see, the, hopefully, the topics within the actual footage here. But first, we're going to talk about our Pokemon Direct reactions. And then we'll jump into three different prediction lists from each of us. So our first set of predictions is going to be a unrealistic E3 wishes sort of thing. So we're going to have predictions that are unrealistic and super exciting and super cool. And we don't necessarily think that's going to happen per se, but that's kind of just letting us, our fanboys, and just completely flow out. And hopefully it comes true, but, you know, they're unrealistic E3 wishes. So it's not realistic. <laughs> and anyways, <laughs> after that, we're going to go down a more darker road, and we're going to have a top three list from each of us, for sour and salty predictions. Very negative predictions of things that we don't necessarily think are going to be that bad. But, you know, when we cut out our fan bias and you just think about the worst case scenarios and what we could possibly see, but not necessarily, that's what you're going to see during the sour and salty predictions. Yes, you know, this is all kind of in a mocking sort of way. So don't fully believe our negativity here. But just, you know, look at it. Let it affect your perception a little bit. Maybe it's a, an interesting thing to think about the other side of things, the negative side of things. And then we're going to have our legitimate top five list from the, each of us of our realistic predictions. And then you know, kind of, well, they're going to be realistic and hopefully positive And most of them come true because we're trying to be realistic here. So we're going to go over all of that throughout the show. And then we'll have some honorable mentions in the meanwhile. And then hopefully we'll have one exciting thing to talk about towards the end. So there we go. And uh, I guess first we should talk about the Pokemon Direct. Uh, we didn't expect it to happen. Um, personally, I didn't think it was going to happen until... Like, I thought it was going to happen in May. And I thought we were going to get our Pokemon Stars announcement that we've heard about so much from a very, the very reputable source of Eurogamer who's reported about so many things <laughs> and been right about every single one, except for this one. And that led to me be, to being incredibly upset. And I was, yeah, just very unhappy about not seeing a Nintendo Switch Pokemon Stars announcement. Uh, what did you guys think? Yeah, um, I myself was really disappointed. I'm not even nearly as big of a Pokemon fan as you. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I woke up, I looked on the on the internet, and I saw what was announced, and I'm like, what? Really? Like, this is it? It's just, they didn't even, like, give any details as to Ultra Sun and Moon, which it doesn't make any sense at all, because it's not like the spotlight is going to have any... 3DS games, and they said it's just going to be Switch games, so it's like, when are they actually going to talk about this game? And, right. Like, yeah, like you were saying, the, the stars rumored from Eurogamer, uh, they were so, like, people have been talking about Pokemon Stars for a really long time, and it got everyone hyped up, and everyone was just so disappointed, uh, as I'm sure as we all were. Um, what about you, Brandon? Yeah, I was extremely disappointed in the moment, like when I was doing my live reactions. It was literally, Nintendo Switch, oh, it's got to be Pokemon Stars, because the first thing they said is, look at the Nintendo Switch, it's awesome. And I was like, Pokemon Stars, it's got to be. And then it was like, Pokemon Tournament. Uh, oh, and it was just like downhill from there. Uh, but thinking back on it, I don't think it was that bad of a bad part, really, was the fact that Sun and Moon aren't coming to the Switch. Other than that, it was actually pretty good. The things they showed were good. Like, Pokémon Tournament with five new characters, especially since Decidueye is in there. Like, I'm looking forward to that. That's actually something I'm excited about. And Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon, despite the horrendously boring names, actually look like it could be a good third version. The only thing is it's not coming to the Switch. Also, they didn't show much because they never show much when they right. do Pokémon Reveal trailers. And they did say that they were going to talk about it heavily in the Treehouse. They're going to have a whole segment on uh, both Pokemon Tournament, which is going to be playable at E3, actually, and Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. Uh -huh. So while it's not, it didn't cater to me personally wanting it on the Switch, I'm still salty about that. Trust me, I'm, I still am absolutely annoyed about that. But overall, minus that part, it was actually a pretty, pretty decent direct. 
Yeah, I mean, actually, Brandon, you bring up a good point. Uh, you know, we were mainly disappointed because there was no Switch announcement, right? Like, we kind of expected the Pokémon thing because it was sort of leaked already, and we figured that there probably still need to be a Pokémon game coming out for 3DS because it's such a large install base, they do have to support that. But the real culprit here is not Nintendo, it's Eurogamer, because they they're a, they're an accredited source. This is like oh, basically like IGN or you know GameSpot were making a report like this, and they had a lot of reports that you know they've been pretty consistent with. Like they can re they reported about the Nintendo Switch, its spec set, about Mario Rabbids, which we've seen all the media come out for that now, and they even reported on the Xbox Scorpio specs. And Microsoft came and announced like, hey, look, Eurogamer is doing us the favor of going over the specs for everyone. So like that's all legitimate and all true. And but the other announcement the report that came from them was Pokemon Stars thing. So a lot of people believed it. Right? So I don't myself included, and maybe a little I'm a little bit biased in saying so, but I don't think you're a fool in any way for believing in the Stars rumor because it was a report by a Eurogamer. It was it was said as something that was factual, not just a rumor. So when we don't get it, we're expecting to get it. So that's why we're disappointed because we had those expectations. And they, I wouldn't even call them unreasonable expectations because it was a report. But because Eurogamer, for whatever reason, was wrong, our expectations were too high. And we did not get that mainline Pokemon game for the Switch. And that's why everyone's so upset about it. But if you actually think about it, it wasn't necessarily that bad. It was just some Pokemon updates. This is not really supposed to be a big Pokemon year. Last year was a big Pokemon year with Sun and Moon. Yet, there's going to be like a Sun and Moon version, which I am a bit skeptical of how great of a version this is going to be with Ultra Sun and Moon, but we'll see. They showed very little. Pokemon Pokemon Tournament DX, I mean, they're porting over Wii U games, but a lot of people didn't get to play on the Wii U, so I understand that business move. And it could be a good version, but I do personally feel that, like, I should have gotten something as a Wii U owner, and I never got any of those DLC characters. So I do feel a little bit burned by that. And the the virtual console announcement I do think is nice, but you know nothing big. Nothing in this in this direct was a big deal for me. But it's all coming right before E3, so you know they're, they're kind of taking away some of those announcements, those smaller announcements, those announcements that are about the Switch mainly, and doing it before E3. So that's exciting to me because it tells me that they're hopefully saving everything up, like the big announcements and focusing everything about the Switch and this new stuff that's coming out this year. Maybe a couple things afterwards all during this short 30 to 45 minute show on Tuesday. So, yeah, that's what I'm yeah. thinking. Um, you guys are all in agreement with that? Sounds like it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, yeah. you know, we didn't want to dwell too much on the Pokemon <laughs> Direct stuff. You know, uh, Brandon has his own video. I have my own video on the Pokemon Direct. It's all me being salty and butthurt. But you can check that. The link might be in the description right. below. And uh, let's get started with our lists. So, our first list is the salty no that's not the salty one it's actually our wishful <laughs> e3 wishes are very super positive not necessarily realistic wishes so we're each going to do a set of three um who wants to go first uh... i'll go first i'm doing it <laughs> no, you guys weren't ready so i'm doing it what'd you say sean oh uh, yeah what'd you say sean i said i want to i just don't know. go for it okay so my first of my three predictions that are super positive and not necessarily realistic, but who knows? Metroid Prime 4 and Metroid Dread will be announced at E3 next week. And when I'm saying that, I, I, oh, wow. oh, I mean like Metroid Prime 4, developed by Retro Studios. They bring in other guys as well from other awesome companies, maybe Bethesda or Platinum Games, and they make this like a Samus. It's like Metroid Prime, but more fluid. He, she moves around quicker, but it's still darker and it's atmospheric and super hard and it's amazing. It's basically the Breath of the Wild treatment for Metroid, and it's going to blow our minds away. And on top of that, that rumor about there being two Metroids in development, it's true. Metroid Dread, the 2D Metroid that's going to be super scary and super cool, also coming out for the Nintendo Switch in glorious HD on the go oh wherever you want. That's coming out <laughs> this year. Metroid Prime 4, 2018 holiday season. Buckets. That's the first one. That's the first one. Dang, son. Yeah. So, nice, nice. yeah, I... Metroid, like, can you imagine how awesome would it would be to actually get Metroid Dread finally? That game's been rumored for years. Like, it doesn't even have to be the same <laughs> game, like, but they could just make a new 2D game and just call it Metroid Dread, and because it has a Dread in the title, people are like, oh my god, it's finally real, it's finally happening. 
you know, yeah. that would be so badass. And I think a 2D Metroid could be really cool. Like, I love Super Metroid, Metroid Fusion. Those are great mm-hmm. games. And to see another one like that on the Switch in HD, it would be beautiful. So, um, hopefully that happens. So that's my first of the list. I, I Do you guys have any initial reactions off that, or do any of you guys want to just get started with your own list? I, I, yeah, I think the double Metroid game is actually kind of realistic because... Nintendo knows oh. how much uh, their fans have been like begging for Metroid, and also what well, I was thinking. Uh, this isn't part of my predictions, but I was thinking at one point maybe the second game has been rumored might be like a 3DS game to like hold us off until uh, the Switch version of the Switch game. That's not actually not unprecedented. I mean, when we look at what happened with Breath of the Wild, we got multiple HD remasters. We got A Link Between Worlds. We got Triforce Heroes. We got the uh, Majora's Mask 3D. We got Twilight Princess HD. We got Wind Waker HD. Yeah. All those things came out to tide us over for Breath of the Wild. Um, mm-hmm. So to see a 2D Metroid to kind of, you know, ra- you know, raise the popularity of Metroid and sort of hype people up about the 3D Metroid coming out hopefully a year from that point when it comes out. Maybe it isn't yeah. too much of an unrealistic prediction, but it is incredibly positive. And, you know, to see two Metroids when we've heard nothing about them aside from rumors, you know, I wouldn't put my stock in that. But hopefully something great happens. <laughs> so should I continue with my own list and then move on to you guys, or should we do a piece of our lists and just go in a roundabout fashion like that? I think we should do a roundabout. Okay, so you go first, Sean. Second. Okay, so um, this this is my like dream game, right? It's a <laughs> Nintendo like universe, like Smash Bros. has all the characters. It's a Nintendo mm-hmm. online RPG with a party system and classes like tanks and healers and such, and it's uh, it's um, the like the dungeons and everything and the raids are like. A lot like World of Warcraft and like. So this is a new IP. It's like, yeah. Okay. And Ooh. it's just like, it's like I always thought it would be awesome if Nintendo did more things like Smash Bros. Like put other characters in a certain genre. And I think it was going to be really cool. So like an art, it... like an MMO kind of thing would be awesome. Okay, so or it's like, not exactly like this Mario Warcraft. Rabbits thing we're hearing about. It's a little different, right? It's kind of like you name more like Starcraft, maybe. Yeah. Uh, like, kind of like, um... Wait, an MMO or an RTS? Like I'm a, sorry. Like a, like a JRPG. Oh, but so maybe like Xenoblade Online? Online? Yeah, yeah. Oh my god, Xenoblade Ooh. Online. Mario what if Xenoblade 2... What if Xenoblade 2 is actually an MMO? Actually, I wouldn't like that, because I want both. So I wouldn't want that to be only online. That kind of actually ruined my hype for that one. But like a Nintendo one, like a new IP, like separate. That'd be yeah. pretty cool. Because I just I mean, love the story in the same like games and. Right, like, you like pick from like tons of characters and like your amiibos could like unlock. Characters. Yeah, they need a game that utilizes the amiibos in some kind of really cool way. I think the game that's probably used yeah, utilized the amiibos the best that I've actually cared about is Breath of the Wild, and in a way it kind of pisses me off because there's all these cool items that you can get that aren't important at all. But they're behind these collectible amiibos. Some of them are pretty rare, uh, and I can't get them. Well, I could if I tried, but yeah. I haven't tried. Cost yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, all right. Um, do we have any thoughts on that? or uh, Brandon, are you ready for your first of your super positive predictions? Oh, I'm ready. All right, let's oh, go. Oh, I'm ready. All right, show me. Show me what Hi. you got. So my number one is... A Wind Waker 2, or just some kind of sequel to Wind Waker, coming in 2018 for the Switch. What? Like, oh, I forgot. This is like a super whole positive. New Wind Waker game. A whole new <laughs> Wind Waker game, like, like in uh, Zelda Breath of the Wild's engine. Like, this is completely unrealistic. Oh, like, there's no way. Something you. Wish. This is gonna happen. But like, a Wind Waker in Breath of the Wild's engine, with like bigger islands. Like. Oh my God. Like the same kind of like exploration thing but with really big islands or like more I mean, there's already been technically two bigger. wind waker sequels but like they could have another one with the breath breath of the wild yeah, i meant one that's like the same kind of gameplay 
Well, As well, here's here's an idea. Here's an idea. Like so there there are some theories out there. Now this is this is the most popular theories. But if you follow my channel, you know I've done a few theories on this among, amongst the other theories. But for Breath of the Wild, some consider that maybe this is not the most popular theory. So don't get pissed off. Okay, just just saying. But some people have considered maybe that after the events of the Wind Waker, the oceans receded after a very long amount of time, and that's how Breath of the Wild came to be. What if this game? is a prequel to Breath of the Wild, and it shows how the oceans receded. And for whatever reason, Link, or the reincarnation of the Link from Wind Waker, has to come back from south from whatever islands, they, from the new Hyrule they found, and that's what you're talking about, Wind Waker 2. And the events that happened there lead to the oceans receding and Hyrule being reborn again. That'd be awesome. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. With the, I mean, it's, the same, it's a game you talked about, I'm just giving the story context here. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. the main thing I want is just that sailing the ocean super adventure i mean that would be cool i think it would be really nice to see that revisited and i think there's a lot that could be done with that but they would have to find a way to make traveling sailing for a long periods of time more interesting like i found it interesting but you know what i mean like they may need to yeah. just think I of a few other ways to kind of do that there's... wait what yeah there's some people who didn't like it as much i think right right uh ocean combat really needs to be revamped like ocean combat sucked in wind waker yeah. like it was not good at all they need to uh, revamp ocean combat. It, it, it needs to be more and than just a raft with a with a Korok leaf, though. Yeah, it should be like a whole ship. Like, what if you take like Assassin's Creed right Black Waker, Flag? Sail away. Assassin's Creed Black Flag. Yeah, I, I guess. Yeah. Hmm. I'm thinking the ship that Tetris like is on. You know, like you'd sail that. Because like, right after Wind Waker ends, like you sail away from the island to go find new lands, but it's like actually a pretty big gap between that and. Uh, What's the right. Phantom Hourglass is what they're yeah. doing in that game. But you're, like, way far away, and, like, that's years and years ahead. So well, what Phantom Hourglass is, like, not too long after, but the, the next the one then after that, it yeah. is, you know, different like lifetimes. Right. Ridiculous. Yeah, they're different yeah. people. That's but they're Phantom Hourglass is... Shortly after. Yeah. I don't know. Something like that. Something shortly after that, because Phantom Hourglass just goes on a whole nother... So you mean before the, about that game, maybe the end of uh, this yeah. supposed sequel for Wind Waker, is it between Phantom Hourglass and Spirit Tracks where they actually find the new Hyrule? Maybe you have to do a series of ocean battles yeah, and beat yeah. out the people who are already there to rebuild Hyrule or start a new Hyrule. Yeah, that could be cool because Phantom Hourglass was like trying to be that, but it didn't work out very well. Okay. I mean, it's hard to do that same level of adventure on a handheld, except for now, of course, because we have the Switch, but... Right, right. Back then, everything was really limited, especially with that 140p screen on the DS. That's crazy. <laughs> All right, so that's a pretty cool idea. I would actually like to see that, but it's not going to happen. But, you know, I would like to see it. Yeah, <laughs> maybe it's not going to happen. <laughs> but, you know, yeah. maybe sometime maybe in the future, like, a few years yeah, from maybe now. Maybe like four or five years from now, but mm. not next year. That's we'll see. Cool. Anyways, so I'm going to go on with my second of my super positive unrealistic predictions. And that is... In an hardware announcements, there aren't going to be any hardware announcements this year, but maybe there are, and Nintendo's lied to us. We're going to get two hardware announcements this year. Nintendo Switch 4K and Nintendo Switch Micro. So, Nintendo Switch 4K is essentially a dock. Just like the dock you already have for your Switch, except this dock gives your, has a, an ex, or it's basically a super RAM expansion, and it allows... To, it allows you, all your Switch games, the games that come out afterwards and the games that are already out, it upscales every game to 1080p and pushes them to 60 frames per second. Every game that's out on Switch. And for games that are developed for this in mind, they can actually run at 4K when docked. And it's super awesome. It's basically Nintendo's answer to PlayStation you know, 4 Pro and Xbox Scorpio. And you know, it's going to run all the same games as everything else. It'll cost an additional $200. It's not a new system, but it's an actual dock. Nintendo 4K. It's happening. And there's also a Nintendo Switch Micro. And this is basically something else to consider because the 3DS is dying, right? So if I actually think Nintendo Switch Micro is something that's going to happen. Okay, this is actually a semi-realistic prediction. I just don't think it's going to happen this year. Um, but the thing about it is that basically the 3DS is dying. They need a new handheld. But this thing they have going with the Switch is sort of a handheld already. But it's not perfect for everyone, especially little kids. Like, this seems like the Switch is a little too big. The battery's not perfect for constantly being on the go. You know what I mean? And it, can, it looks like it can break pretty easily. So I think they need to come up with something that's more durable, but still be a Switch. Something you can still plug into your dock and play it as if it were a Switch, 
but you know that's more portable friendly so what I'm thinking is that maybe they also come out with a Nintendo Switch Micro and it doesn't come with a dock or you know like a little controller to play it normally on a television but if you buy the extra parts you can make it run it like a uh, you know a normal switch but it's a little smaller so it fits into the switch dock but you know you have to kind of push it in there but it still has like little joy cons so these joy cons are flat right so they have sliders instead of actual sticks and the shoulder buttons are kind of like on the new 3ds so they just kind of fit flushly to the square like area so you just have like these flat pieces that are basically like just kind of like you know like this new 3ds like imagine this little piece just cut off with these shoulder buttons on both sides. So smaller slimmer Joy-Cons on a slightly smaller screen at 540p that can run for like 12 hours. Nintendo Switch Micro, another $200. Both of which coming out this year. Not really. But I think both could happen someday. And I think it'd be a really great ways to expand the audience for Nintendo Switch and not alienating anyone who actually already has a Switch because they'll all play the same games. Yeah. yeah. You, know, you know what's funny? Yeah. You know, you know what's really funny is that's, that's my second prediction. Oh! Which one? The four, but four K, the four Nintendo K, Switch four K, or I don't think the micro is happening. Any okay? Consider that. So, but my my next thing was four K dot coming out next year. Okay, next year. Next year but they're going to announce it this year, happen. according to your super yeah, positive unrealistic year, prediction. Okay, yeah, they would come out next year. Okay. All right. Well, I guess we're right on that. So, should we just jump to Sean and your second prediction? <laughs> no, uh, maybe. <laughs> Yes, you weren't ready because yeah. I mean Brandon's prediction is the same as mine essentially, except he thinks it'll come out next year in his super unrealistic Great positive think prediction. Alike. Yeah, too great. Four K great. I got I got a good uh, prediction. It's not too unrealistic. It's just like probably not like, but it'll be awesome. Uh, Overwatch on the Switch, right? Ooh, yeah. Is that one of yours? Yeah. No, I'm just super excited about that. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, Overwatch on the Switch with Nintendo skins for the characters. Uh, okay. And they do like a weekly brawl on that game. I don't know if you guys know, but it's kind of like a mini game kind of thing. And they do an they're gonna do a brawl mode that's like um, Final Destination uh, but Mario 3D. Kart. Mario Kart. Yeah. <laughs> Mario Kart or brawl or both. Yeah, something. So a Nintendo themed Both. like set of characters, skins, and a couple stages on top of the standard Overwatch. I oh, wish man. that happened. And actually, Dude, in my dude, I meant that so quick. Like I think it's not even that what? out of. I don't even think that's that unrealistic. I just think it's unrealistic for this year, given yeah. the statements we heard from the Overwatch team. But it's not like yeah. they don't want it to happen. And they, it's it can happen in terms of a hardware perspective. Like it's not that hard to get yeah. it to run on the Switch already with really minimum not. with minimal optimization. But it's just a matter of getting the deals ready, getting it on board, getting it all set to go for this year. It doesn't seem realistic, but maybe next year. That's, yeah. like, super cool, and I would love that. That'd be fantastic, and I'd be there day one. Whew. Okay. Uh, I, also, just... I'm uh, what? Um, it's going to have the gyro controls with it. Yes, please. Splatoon style, right? It's gonna be... Yeah. Yeah, and it's going to be the, the way... To the play the game on consoles because of the gyro controls. Man, Dude. and uh, I'd the portability and all the new battles and everything. Wow. Okay. Yeah, be that a... that's a pretty that I like that prediction, Sean. So oh, yeah. even though great minds may think alike, <laughs> great minds also can have come up with their own original ideas, and that is different from our own. <laughs> However, you yeah. know, I I did consider Overwatch in my E3 <laughs> predictions video, so just pointing that out. Uh, yeah. But um, a lot of people thought about it. I but I like I like your idea of Nintendo be... theme content. That's really cool. Yeah, I don't think it'd be that hard to port it over because Overwatch really is considered one of those like games that can run on a potato these days. Like it really well, is. Like anytime you see, like, like see like GPU like uh, benchmarks, it would be like the low tier will be Overwatch. Like, that's considered, like, one of those things that, right. like, anything can run it, pretty much. If it's any kind right, of decent, right, right. it will run it. But I don't think the Switch would really have that problem running it. No, uh, I think, so, it, like I said, fact, I mean, my, my I think we, we all are in agreement here. Graphic card that... Right. Yeah, everyone agrees yeah. that it, it can run on Switch. Will run on the Switch. It's, it's, not, it's not a power well, issue. Like it's a relations that. slash timing slash budgetary issue. Um, yeah. But we'll see what happens. I mean, it's, impo it's not impossible. Maybe it'll happen soon. So, um, 
I want to kind of keep this going because we do have a lot to talk about, believe it or not, yeah. um, with our okay. unrealistic unpredictions. Unpredictions, what? Anyways. <laughs> unpredictions. <laughs> unpredictions. And I'm going to start with my final list of my super positive unrealistic predictions. They won't happen, but maybe they will. And this is kind of on the hinges of the uh, Pokemon Direct. So I feel like I need to say this first off. Pokemon being shown off as the Pokemon game for the Nintendo Switch this year kind of eliminates any hope that there will be an actual Pokemon Stars on top of this Ultra Sun and Moon announcement, right? But, but, there was, Eurogamer said Pokemon Stars for a reason, right? Like, did they really just falsify that information? Did they just get bullshit information? Or maybe something changed? Or maybe, maybe, Nintendo's holding something back here. Maybe Pokemon Stars is not even Ultra Sun and Moon in a code name, but maybe Pokemon Stars is an entirely different game only for the Switch that's way better and cooler than Ultra Sun and Moon for the 3DS. It's an HD, actual, full mainline Pokemon game that is a storyline sequel to Sun and Moon rather than an alternative story and retelling as the way it seems that they're telling us for Ultra Sun and Moon. Something far more exciting, way cooler, and for my super positive, unrealistic prediction, Considering everything that's been said and done, it's going to be announced next week, guys. And everyone who said I was wrong, you're all wrong. <laughs> I, I mean, the fact, I mean, I, I mean, realistically speaking, I don't think it's actually going to happen. But there is that, that small, cool. that small little, you know, hope in the back of my mind thinks that maybe there's something still there. Because, I mean, the fact of the matter is, Something spurred that Pokemon Stars report. Whether it was a rumor, something happened where they had to report that. Like, Eurogamer didn't just make it up. If they did, I mean, that's a terrible, serious issue and an interesting conversation in and of itself. But something is there. So, I don't know what happened. I don't know why we didn't get that announcement. But something is there, guys. So, you know, we may never ever see it. We may never actually know. Maybe, you know, for Game Theory or something, though, or, you know, beta games or whatever, that YouTube channel, they're like, so Pokemon Stars, this is what actually happened 10 years down the road. So we'll see. But probably not, but who knows, right? We don't really know. No. Um, all right, so who's next? Brandon, I think. Yeah, I think it's Brandon, right? Well, technically it was you, Sean, but Brandon had the same thing as I did, so we swapped the order. So whoever's ready, just go, you know. I was ready. I can go. All right, go, Ryan. I guess I'll go. My thing is a proper Paper Mario game. In fact, a Paper Mario, the Thousand Year Door. Two. Two. Coming oh. 2018. Okay. Would be ridiculous. Like I, I don't even I don't even think that's that unrealistic. I just think it's unrealistic that we'll see it at E3. I think yeah, pretty much. That's what I'm thinking. Like unrealistic that we'll see it this year. Plus, with how much they've been screwing us over it wouldn't surprise me if that's totally not the case but just everything back like partner systems full rpg battle battle uh battles and all that kind of stuff and it's a direct like story sequel to thousand year door that's pretty cool um Which yeah the biggest thing i think would i would be down for that <laughs> you know let's just throw in but something else here don't... maybe maybe we'll get a paper mario thousand year door hd this year Dude, I'd be so down for that. Yeah, yeah. that'd be pretty cool. Uh, I, think I think Paper really Mario would look really good in HD too. Yeah, what if they, like kind of like that Wind Waker HD treatment. Style. Um, it would look beautiful, wouldn't it? What if they completely remade it? And what if, if they if they use the color the the engine the color splash engine? Yeah, it would look great. Cool. I bet they could actually get that pretty, get that out pretty quickly. I'd be down for that. I bet there'd be some people who would be mad. They're like, it's not the same. I'm like, I don't care. It looks amazing. Yeah, pretty much. That's um, we feel the same way about that. All right, um, Sean, you ready for your final super positive, unrealistic yeah. prediction that'll never happen? Well, maybe it will. Uh, well, I mine is a uh, yet another Metroid prediction. Okay, uh, we're probably gonna have like eighty throughout this whole episode. But uh... Uh, tell me, <laughs> a three D Metroid? No, no, no. Uh, dual release with a 2D or anything. It's only one game. And, um... It has, like, ridiculously good graphics, like... Like, haters and everyone that, like, say that the Switch is, like, super underpowered. They'll, they'll like, shut them all up because it, like, looks that good. And, uh... It is literally everything anyone has ever wanted. Game. And it's, like, it's the perfect 
game. It's, like, it's the, than, like, it's the Destiny now. slash Halo slash what's that Horizon? Not yes, whatever Horizon slash what's that space game that that bombed? Um, I forgot the no name. No Man's Sky. No Man's Sky Killer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And I, uh, the reason why I think it's unrealistic is because um, I just I don't think it'll be everything we've wanted. I think it'll be like. Uh, than what we think it's going to be. I mean, the realistic point of view is that, look, Breath of the Wild is probably Nintendo's biggest game ever. And what you're talking about basically is going to require a similar kind of effort for Metroid. And the problem with that is that while we may eventually get something that's kind of close to what you're talking about, right? Maybe it'll fall a little bit short of those expectations. The problem with that is that the sales don't really indicate that level of effort. You know what I mean? Right? Like, Zelda doesn't sell as well as it should be sometimes. And then it sells really well, don't get me wrong. And Breath of the Wild may be the best-selling Zelda game ever once everything is said and done. But Metroid, while it's a good-selling franchise, is nothing compared to Zelda, which is nothing compared to Mario, which is nothing compared to Pokemon. You know? So you think about in terms of budgetary efforts here, well, I mean... It's not realistic, but maybe yeah. they'll do it. Maybe they will push Metroid to that next level. You know, um, I would love to I see think, that. I think that everyone on the internet has been complaining for so long and like complaining so hard about Metroid and how we did, haven't had one forever that I think that they're they think it's going to be worth it. And like everyone's reactions and everything on the internet is going to like right. Um, well, the, the way things are, things are different now. It's not back in the GameCube era, right? So, like, back in the GameCube era when Metroid Prime came out, although that's considered by many to be one of the greatest games ever, like, just look at Metacritic, man. The thing's really high up there, and it's one of my personal favorite games ever. It's an amazing game, and it broke so many boundaries. But the problem is that the GameCube was a commercial failure. I mean, not compared to the Wii U. The Wii U's even worse. But, you know, compared to the PS2, it just did so poorly, and it was considered a kiddie system. And that didn't do that didn't really help Metro Prime to sell as well as it should have. I mean, even on the Wii, Metro Prime yeah. 3 sold even worse than Metroid Prime. And the Wii was one of the best selling consoles of all time. They had like at least five times the install base as the GameCube, yet it sold half as well as Metroid Prime on the GameCube. So yeah. those are problems there. But the thing is, is that marketing is not wasn't good back then for Nintendo. Not really. And, it's, and today Nintendo's really kind of going ham with the marketing. Like I saw an arms uh, tr commercial during the NBA Finals, and that was really cool. But also with social media now, there's a, that whole that word of mouth that Nintendo's always loved to do back in the good old days is on a whole other level thanks to social media and YouTube and Twitch. Yeah. So Metroid has that ability to sell now because of the different ecosystem. But Nintendo needs to pri needs to take advantage of that. I think and hope they will, but we'll see. So. Yeah. I don't think it's that unrealistic to think that a Metroid game on the Switch would have like ridiculously good graphics. Just because look at the ones on like the GameCube, those still hold up. Like you look at them, even if you, you just run those things in 1080p, like they hold up ridiculously well. And yeah. of course, the GameCube's like ancient of days old. So imagine what they could do on a system that's you know getting closer to say you know PS4 and Xbox One and levels of power. Sometimes I'm shocked at how good Breath of the Wild looks, and that was developed for the Wii U, right? Yeah. So the Switch is more powerful than the Wii U. So yes, Breath of the Wild sometimes has some issues with frame rates uneven on the Switch, but that's more of an optimization thing. If they develop the game ground up yeah. for the Switch, a lot is possible with that thing. And don't underestimate Nintendo. Nintendo, with the Wii, made games that look pretty damn good. Like, during the oh, initial yeah. HDR, like, Super Mario Galaxy and Metroid Prime 3, those games looked better than most Xbox 360 games at the time, from an artistic point of Definitely. view. So, don't underestimate Nintendo. They know how to make, really push their systems when they want to. I mean, Breath of the Wild is an example enough, in my opinion. Remember, that came out, that's for, that was developed for the Wii U. Like, it looks yeah. amazing. So, you know, yeah, for sure. I think Metroid Prime could look amazing when it does come out. If that ever happens, so um, yeah. On that slightly sour, sort of positive pseudo note, <laughs> let's move on to the negative stuff. And by negative stuff, these things aren't. I mean, you know, it's kind of how we take it. We we try to be a bit more mocking and negative during this section. Um, this is kind of us being salty and sour, 
and hoping for the worst because we're just so tired of being wronged all the time. Um, but <laughs> without further ado, let me start everything off. In my positive section, I said that Pokemon Stars is not Ultra Sun and Moon. It's an entirely different game that's coming out for Switch. It's going to be announced next week. In this section, I'm going to say the exact opposite. Pokemon is not happening. And it's not going to happen on the Nintendo Switch. We're not going to get a mainline Pokemon game ever on the Switch. In fact, they're just going to stay on the 3DS for an extended period of time, and they are going to chug and push that old little system for way too long, and we're never going to get the Pokemon game we deserve. At least, probably not, because, I mean, with Trump being president, you never know what could happen with the world. So many things are different changing. So, you know, just no Pokemon, guys. None. Yeah, that's my negative prediction. Yeah. Who's first? So what a guess. sad, sad world that would be. Yeah. <laughs> Who's ready to drop some more bombs, Brandon? Alright, I can go. I'm, I'm not sure if mine are, you know, absolutely devastating, but I try to come up with things that are pretty bad, you know, personally for me. Uh, okay. I think the later one's worse than this one, but this one's still pretty bad, and that is Mario Odyssey delayed till late 2018. What? We only know the, the worlds we have seen are the only ones available. The worlds are actually, the parts we've seen is pretty much like 90% of what there actually is, and there's no stars. Instead, there's just a hidden flag ball you have to find in each world before you beat it. Oh my god. Yeah. So it's three. So it's 3D land 3.0? How do I get you out of this conversation? Yeah, pretty How much. do I eject you? <laughs> I'm just kidding. That, is, that would be... I don't want to think about that. That's too negative. What the hell's wrong with you? Yeah, but terrible. it's not even... I mean, it's it's super... I think I think Nintendo's going to do incredible with Odyssey, but, you know, it's not completely yeah. out of... It's not... It's 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 not impossible. Um, yeah. But it's not yeah. likely that it's going to be that bad. Yeah. But, you know, oh, God. Of I course, want... I don't think any of this is going to happen. Right, but it's... But, yeah, if it did... Just to think about it, I mean, we have only seen four worlds, and delays do happen. Although it's mostly with Zelda. So, uh, let's just stop. Let's just move on to the next negative to topic. Uh, Sean, <laughs> just go. Oh, gosh. Uh, well, I'll go with my least disastrous out of my three. But to me, it is the most. Which is uh, Xenoblade 2 is delayed until 2019. That's... What? Two years? Yeah. yeah. Yep. Are you serious? <laughs> but for me, personally, that is like the absolute worst thing that could happen. Yeah. Oh my we have god. Two, we have two close tastes. That's my second one. Jesus. Gosh, dang it. Well, that definitely speeds up our listing. That sucks. <laughs> oh my god. Like, yeah. I mean, oh gosh, that would be the worst thing. I would kill someone. I just, just go out and just random Joe just die. Alright, well, keep in mind this is all being recorded. Blood must so. be spilt. <laughs> <laughs> For the record, I'm joking. Uh, but, <laughs> you know, I'd resurrect an altar. To the Xenoblade gods and slay somebody, you know, it's really that bad. Oh man, like I, it, it kind of upsets me because Xenoblade is an amazing franchise, and honestly, to me personally, it's on the same level as Zelda, Mario, and Metroid. It's right there, it's yeah. just it it's really close. And I think oh, so many people just have just not given it a try that don't understand just how good Xenoblade is. And people have tried out Xenoblade X because mm -hmm. of the open world structure, and that's a pretty good game, but compared to the original Xenoblade on the Wii, oh God, Xenoblade on play the play Wii play. is way... It's like a really good game. Like, people say it was the best Japanese yeah. Japanese RPG of that generation. It was the best RPG of that generation. Okay, and that was like a seven-year-long... It's, it's one of the best RPGs of all time. Yes. Um, so, if you haven't tried Xenoblade, I strongly suggest you do. I think it might be available on Virtual Console already. You can go play it on your Wii. Mm -hmm. You can play it on your new 3DS. Play that game. It's an amazing game. Yes, it looks like a PS2 game with an incredibly large, beautiful world, but it's an amazing, an amazing game. The story is great. The world is huge, actually, and especially if you play that at that yeah. time. It's just kind of, like, mind-blowing how big it is. Like, you kind of see, like, this giant waterfall basin that's, like, few miles long you're like wow if i were to jump down there i would die but then you jump down there and you fall in the water and you start swimming around like it's like the breath of the wild of last generation in terms of like scope like it's just amazing in fact the scope is even bigger than breath of the wild um it's incredible really and just it's not mountains we're looking at here it's like it's like giant robotic street it's just incredible you really need to give it a shot yeah. like i wish more nintendo fans gave it a shot because it's truly truly Definitely. an amazing franchise it's right there with mario zelda and, Mar and, and metroid it really is well, the Xenoblade 2 trailer has the most views out of, like, 
by far out of any of those Xenoblade games. So yeah, right. So it's getting that publicity it deserves. Um, yeah, hopefully yeah. it sells mm -hmm. like it deserves to. So, um, all right. So I guess I should, I should get started with my next negative prediction. Yeah. No Smash Brothers. I just you know what I think this is even semi realistic. Um, it's negative because I, I do think I do I do think yeah. Smash Bros is going to come really soon. But in this negative prediction, it's not even coming really soon. There's no Smash Brothers. Smash Brothers was kind of over and done with already. They got what they wanted from out of the Wii U and 3DS era. They already have Pokémon Arms and Mario Kart and Splatoon. They have enough multiplayer online games to last them a while. So don't expect Smash Brothers anytime soon at all. Now, if you actually want my realistic thoughts on that, um, I think we're going to see Smash Brothers, but maybe not this year. Um, at E3, at least. I think it's in the works, and I think it's coming soon. I think, realistically speaking, in my opinion, we may see it early next year. Uh, but not this year. And then, if I go, go back to my negative mindset, never. But, you know, that that's not actually true. We're going <laughs> to see Smash eventually, just not this E3. So, yeah. 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 Alright, so who's next? What's the next bomb? Hmm. Are we on our second one or our third yeah, one? Because my well, second one was the same as well. Jones. Well, yeah. Um, Sean can do your second one, actually. Okay, yeah, uh, Brandon, <laughs> how about you, like, think of one while I uh, do this or something? I don't know. But, uh, okay, so... Um, Trust me, my last one... This is my second good. worst. Uh, we literally see nothing new in the whole entire thing except... For the rabbit game Jesus. and it looks just as bad as it sounds oh, and uh, it is like the looks like absolutely terrible and it convinces other third parties to never ever team up with Nintendo again Jesus. and the whole the switch's life cycle will forever be uh, just a Tainted. first party in indie machine and not be any more third party games <laughs> Jesus yeah, and Oh, I kind of I kind of regret coming up with this topic because I don't like I don't like hearing all this but yeah. possible negativity. Yeah, well, for me, they've shown so many games already. Like I get the latter part of that is terrible, like no third party support, like ugh. But not showing that many new reveals first party wise wouldn't actually be that bad for me, just because we have Monster Hunter, Pokémon Tournament, uh, Mario Odyssey, Xenoblade, and High or. I should say Fire Emblem Warriors. Like right. that's already enough to like fill out the rest of the year. So even sure. if they don't show anything new, yeah, yeah, that up. it wouldn't be that but, bad. But if third parties, the, the latter part where third parties are just like pissed off at Nintendo, I'd be so upset. Yeah, that would be bad. When we do need more third party announcements. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, um, all right. So who should who should go for the third um, predictions now? I don't should know. We, if I say mean... mine, everybody might want to kill me. Okay, so fine. So I'll do last. mine. I'll do mine. All right. So, uh, you guys, you guys remember how Miyamoto a few months ago said that uh, Pikmin Four was almost done with in development, and mm. then uh, a couple months after that, we saw Pikmin for 3DS. Well, my yep. super negative prediction is that we get confirmation that Pikmin for 3DS is Pikmin Four, and that there's no Pikmin coming for Switch anytime soon. Yeah, oh, no. I believe it. No. I actually I kinda, think that the, there's a the real Pikmin. Parties, I almost believe it. Yeah, I mean, it's not. I, 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 I'm being negative here, and I don't, I, I don't think this is my realistic thing, but it's not too far off from potentially the truth. Um, That's it's kind the of worst 50 -50. part about it. It's, yeah. It's almost. Yeah. It, it's like you could it, almost believe it. Right. It might be true, yeah. but I don't think it is. I think right. Pikmin Four is actually real and it's coming to I'm the still Switch. Holding hope. Um, yeah. It may even be shown off at E3. Uh, but there's that possibility that Pikmin for 3DS is actually Pikmin 4. Um, yeah, it could have been like a mistranslation. Yeah, yeah, but I don't think so. I don't actually think so. But that's my negative prediction. It's, it's, yeah. So, uh, Sean, <laughs> how about you go with yours? Because apparently Brandon is going to completely, you know, ruin our relationship with him. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh... Um, Reggie takes you know, center stage of the presentation. He looks the camera dead in the eye and he screams at everybody, like full on yelling at us. And he, he's telling everyone, 
to stop asking for a Metroid game because they are have given up on the franchise forever. Jesus. The whole presentation. <laughs> so Metroid is so Metroid's dead. Metroid is dead. Yeah. Yeah, they confirmed it. Oh, that. mine's worse. Hatch, uh, hashtag Metroid is dead. Oh my god. All right, well, let's just let's just get the negativity out of the way, you know. Just rip off the band-aid. Do it. Oh, mine's much worse than Just Metroid do it, Brandon. Dead. Just do it. Just do it. Metroid Prime Amiibo Festival. What? Metroid Prime Amiibo Festival. Oh, that, that's technically not worse, but it is worse. That's oh. way worse. That's way worse. I mean, if we never get another Metroid game again, um That's I don't never know. nothing except like the only Metroid we get is Metroid Prime. Uh, amiibo festival. Oh, and there's only like two compatible about, uh, amiibos. Federation Force. Yeah, you think it? You think people will be upset about you know Federation Force? Like, there is no understanding how upset people will be if they came up with Metro Prime Amiibo yeah. Festival. That'd be That's, a new. That'd be like a... Nintendo would burn. That would be yeah, very, me. very, very shitty. And this is this is off the heels of the Federation Force thing yeah. from before. And, yeah, they're like, ah. they like Federation Force. You know what they will like. Amiibo <laughs> Festival. Festival. Amiibos have been rising in sales recently. Look, Sam the Samus Amiibos have actually been selling a lot. Huh. Maybe we should make an Amiibo Festival for Metroid. Yeah. Let's put Prime on there, too, because people have been talking about so much. This makes so much sense. <laughs> yeah, We're going to make all the money. It'll be, the, it'll be in the Federation Force engine. <sighs> and it'll only be for 3DS. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think it'd be worse if it was for Switch, so they could say that's the Switch game. Oh yeah. Oh, but it'll be sub 720p. Yeah, it'd be like 540p for something. Yeah, like for whatever reason, like it's they really had a low ass budget, budget, so they weren't able to even get anything running well on it. <laughs> no, it was ported from the 3DS, but they were too lazy to upscale it, so it's 240p on the. Oh, they they they, they 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 ported over the Federation Force engine and they combined it with the Animal Crossing engine. So it's super oh, glitchy, gosh. just doesn't work really well, and it's sub 720p, and it's running at like 26 frames per second, and it's super inconsistent, and there's only like three amiibos that are compatible with it. Yeah, they 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 bring they already have the Zero Suit Samus amiibo, and they have the Met, this normal Samus amiibo, but they'll just add one more amiibo, and that's a Metroid amiibo. And that'll be the and best they, thing that comes from that announcement. They can mix it in with Mario Party 10 and have everybody be in the same car. Okay, that's it. We're done. I'm sorry. No, no, no more. This, 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 this is done. We are moving on to our actual realistic predictions because oh I'm done torturing you guys. We're we're done with that. So here we go. Okay, realistic predictions. I have. I think mine are pretty cool. So I'm gonna start off with my first one. And if you've seen my some of my content already, you may already know where I'm headed with this. But I believe the breath. This is a realistic prediction. So. Like, these are my actual real predictions, okay? There's no stipulations behind these. This is what I actually think is possible, and there's a fair chance it could happen, okay? So, here we go. Zelda DLC trailer. The fall Breath of the Wild DLC, we're going to see a story trailer for that in the vein of the trailer we saw at the Nintendo Switch presentation. And I talked about this already in one of my videos about Nintendo Switch E3 predictions, but I think this is one of the really con confident things I have, and I think it's, it's going to be great. It's going to be really cool. And it's gonna be awesome, and we'll see. We'll actually get to see what we're gonna expect from this. Now, I don't know how extensive it will be, and that's where you know I'm being a bit more realistic here. So I don't. If they say one dungeon, we we, may, we really may only get one dungeon, but hopefully it's kind of a big deal. So that's what I think's gonna happen, guys. I'd agree. I definitely agree that, that would happen. Like I'd be really surprised if we didn't show that. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna go on a limb and um. I'm, I'm gonna say my my prediction because I don't think that's gonna happen because one uh, it's only gonna be 30 minutes and they already have like so much to show off that I don't think like showing off already out is necessarily like a good idea I think that they will do like the DLC during a treehouse though yeah that's when I, I actually agree with that probably be during the treehouse you're all wrong <laughs> <laughs> okay, I mean, we'll see. Um, you know, all right. Is that actually one of your predictions, John? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Um, uh, Brandon, so I guess we'll move on to your first prediction, right? Get to Sean, is that your first prediction? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think that even though Nintendo has said that they're only going to talk about stuff in 2017, 
They've said it before and talked about stuff the next year. So I think what they're going to talk about is going to be Pikmin 4. And the reason we haven't seen it is because it's going to de uh, be delayed till early. Or I guess it wouldn't be delayed because they never gave us the release date. But we thought, thought it was probably coming out this year, right? So it would be delayed in our minds to early 2018. No, I agree with that, actually. Um, I don't think that's necessarily... I don't want to call it delayed because it was never actually announced. I never actually expected Pikmin this year, yeah. to be honest. Um, I think that's possible. Um, it makes a lot of sense, to be honest. And I think... So here's the thing, that when they put out the press release for the Nintendo Switch Spotlight, they said they would be focusing on Switch games for 2017. The way that's worded, that leaves it open for a couple things to be shown off, maybe towards the end of the yeah. show, for teases for next year. That is within the realm of possibility, and I would say it's almost a guarantee we'll see at least one thing that's coming next year. At least one yeah, thing. So and maybe one of those things is yeah. Pikmin 4. Um, that'd be really cool, and to see that on the Switch, man, that thing will look beautiful. Like it'd be really good, mm -hmm. and you could even, I mean, if you see more of good, you still can have, kind of have like pointer controls. So with the Joy Cons, you could have your standard control set up and still use like that pointer functionality we saw on the Wii U version. So there's a lot of options with that. I think it's super possible, and actually, I, I, I could be pretty. I, I definitely can be, get, get behind that, for sure. Yeah, I yeah. think the graphics will be like ridiculously good. Uh, especially considering how good the Wii, the one looked on Pikmin 3 looked on the Wii U, and that was confirmed to actually be like Wii initially, and then just you know redone for the Wii U. So it's not even built from the ground up for the Wii U. Imagine what a Pikmin 4 game built up for the ground up uh, for the Switch could look like. Like that's right. incredible. Yeah, they, it would. It, I think it'll look a lot better for sure. Yeah, <laughs> I hope we see it. To be honest, I just want to see how pretty it's gonna look. So. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm going to actually jump into my next realistic prediction. So, um, oh, hello. All right. So our realistic predictions, my second set, is basically they're going to only touch on Splatoon 2 and ARMS. So those games, they're going to have their own tournaments for them. And we're getting, they're both releasing around summertime. We've gotten multiple directs on, the, on them already. So they're actually going to take up maybe like not even a minute or two of the entire uh, Spotlight event. So it's going to be focused on a whole bunch of other stuff. So don't expect those games to take up too much time during a Spotlight event. That's one of my predictions. Yeah. In fact, I actually think. Yeah, that, I totally agree. In fact, I also think uh, Fire Emblem Warriors will probably also be a really short trailer as well. Like they're not, they're going to, they're going to like, oh yeah, here's Fire Emblem Warriors. Yeah. Play at the that spot. Like Play during the treehouse. In the treehouse. Yeah. So those three games will take up not even five minutes together. Yeah, that's what I think. Yeah, I wouldn't imagine, especially mm -hmm. not arms. Yeah. Like that's probably gonna be like, oh yeah, it's coming out June sixteenth. Okay, bye. Yeah, two like days two from days now. Later. Yeah. <laughs> here's twenty minutes on arms. It's coming out tomorrow. No, that's not gonna happen. <laughs> so. All right, yeah. Sean. So, are you ready for your second prediction? Um. Yes, uh, let's go pick which one I want to do first. Um, I have mine ready. All right, Brendan, okay, you can go, go while, while Sean gets right, his. My prediction ready. is that Xamarin Chronicles 2, it's not, it's kind of negative, but I think it's realistic. Xamarin Chronicles 2 will hit 2017 in Japan, but we will be delayed to early 2018 in the West. Due to I, translation. That's actually my next prediction as well. Hmm. Yeah. But. Like, I just don't see that but, coming out this year. But. If you watched my E3 predictions video, in it I basically suggested a similar thing. However, I do think there's that possibility, since the Switch is region free now, that they'll take advantage of that. And you can import it in, they may even have their own program set up for it to do that, and the game will have English subtitles. So you can play the game in Japanese, as a lot of people may prefer to do, with English subtitles. So Yeah, but no but no English voice act. Right, no, no, no. I mean, if you're an anime fan, Not you might even prefer to play it in Japanese with English subtitles. Yeah. So I think there's a possibility that, that if that happens, that they'll allow there to be English subtitles so some people can import, import it. At least that's what I hope for. I think there's a chance yeah. of it. So that's actually my third prediction. So actually, you know, yeah. yeah. I think that's actually pretty realistic, but I definitely wait just because I like, I don't know, I just like everything to be in English. Right, I'm a big time anime fan, and I enjoy things in their original languages most of the time. So I'd be okay with importing it. Actually, it's just a matter of opinion. Right, like, personally for me, yeah. I'd want to be able to hear it in English. Okay, just it kind of reinforces things more for me, makes it feel 
this more realistic. I don't know, it kind of immerses me more when I'm when I'm hearing people speaking in my language and stuff, having to read subtitles. Because that kind of takes me out of the experience a lot, especially in story-driven games like Xenoblade. Like, or, okay. Yeah, this one should be more story-based. It's like an interesting argument. Um, I mean, I've played Zelda and I've always been immersed, and there is no voice acting, so, you know. But you know, yeah. yeah. Well, we'll, well, you know, of course you you, like... you can wait. That's that's completely up to you. Not a big deal. Yeah. <laughs> so... Actually, for me in Zelda, when they switched from voice acted cutscenes, and then all of a sudden it would be it was off putting. It's actually really jarring for me. Yeah, yeah, I feel the same like, it was way. Actually, super jarring. No, I feel the same way. Like I way much prefer voice acting. Right, I think they should have uh, found, like be done a better job of adding more voice acting. Yeah, I think that would be the kind of the same thing I'd feel playing with English subtitles but Japanese voice. But I can totally understand uh, the fact that a lot of people don't mind that. Yeah. yeah. I actually think the thing that's weird about Breath of the Wild with that is that it's not so much that there is a combination of voice acting and no voice acting, is that some of the transitions between voice acting and no voice acting is a little weird. That's where the issue is. Because like normal side quests that don't have any significance to the main story, they don't, yeah, I'm okay with that and having voice acting. But like, for example, at the beginning of the game when you speak to the king, there are segments of that entire conversation that have voice acting and then other parts that don't. And that's what's weird about it. So hopefully that yeah. doesn't happen with uh, Xenoblade, and hopefully you know that's eventually fixed for Breath of the Wild or uh, the sequel for the next Zelda. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. uh, Sean, are you ready or not yet? Yeah. Okay. Um, All right, here we go. So Surprise me. These, these are like little little things. Um, there will be no virtual console in the presentation. I think oh. that is. I think that's silly to think that it would be. Uh, there will be obviously no mobile games. So oh, I've yeah. seen some people <laughs> predict that there will be mobile games. I'm like, what? Are you kidding? They, they said that like 80 times last year that E3 is not the place to, to show. Yeah. And yeah, somehow the Nintendo games. stock may still drop because the investor will be like, oh, no mobile games. I thought you were going to go all mobile. Oh, I don't play video games. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just a snotty nose investor who wants to make money. Oh, gosh, dang it. Yeah. yeah right. Pretty much. Okay, and, uh, no, I, I believe that, actually. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. yeah, I think that Virtual Console will probably be talked about in, like, a uh, online, tra like, a trailer that, like, a direct specifically for a Virtual Console and, like, online services. Yeah, yeah or maybe yeah. at their investors' meeting. They'll to play yeah. Yeah. I don't think it'd be as small as an investors' meeting. I think it'd be an actual, no. like... Yeah, I think there'll actually be. A, maybe, there I will be. I think there will actually be a Nintendo Direct eventually highlighting Virtual Console. I think there's a chance yeah, we'll see it at E3, thinking. but I'm not banking on it either. So I'm actually in agreement that we yeah, won't see it this E3. But it's possible. It's not. It's not yeah. out of. I won't be shocked if we see a Virtual Console announcement. But I think they're more. They care more about just the games right now, so they won't show it off. Yeah, I agree. So, yeah. No. Yeah, in fact, we'll probably hear more about it. Like maybe, uh, fall time. I think. Like, you know, kind Probably. of like the September, like, like the September, yeah. October months. So, that's what I'm thinking. Or maybe even early 2018. I don't know. Like, when when they finally decided to tell us everything about the online setup. It may happen actually around the time Splatoon comes out with the voice chat. So, that's something to consider as well. But they don't have to do it because Virtual Console is separate from voice chat. So, we'll see. Yeah. All right. So, I actually, I mean, I've already gone over three of my own predictions. Sean, I think you're still at two. Brandon, I think you're also still at two. So, who wants to go next? Yeah. Um, I'll go. I can. Okay. I'll go next. Just okay. to switch off because I right. just went. All right. Um, Give him my recovery I think time. That, yeah, I think <laughs> there will be a Metroid uh, Prime teaser being made by Retro Studios. I don't think it'll be very long. I think it'll be Jesus. only a couple seconds, like maybe, maybe thirty seconds long. Like really short, mostly CGI, like barely any gameplay. Uh, Metroid, like, just to announce that they're making one for the Switch. And then maybe talk about it a little bit, like, and the treehouse, and or maybe just talk about like a tiny bit, just say this is a sequel to Metroid, just like this is gonna be in the right art style, just Damn to let it, the Brandon. people know. You ruined it, man. It. You ruined I think it for it'll me. Be coming out. I think it will be coming out either next year or the year after. I don't think you there's any ruined coming it. Metroid coming out this year. You ruined it. I'm sorry. You ruined it for me, Brandon. <laughs> that was gonna be my no, final been... realistic prediction. You oh, ruined, I ruined it. it all. Yeah, I was gonna be like, oh wait. <sighs> God, you're supposed to save that for later. Jesus. Oh I just... no. 
I was gonna predict. I guess I have to. I have to switch my list up now. But I was gonna predict something similar. And Metroid was going to develop a Metroid game that's like the Prime series. Maybe not necessarily with the Prime moniker, but potentially is being developed by Retro Studios and will be teased at the end of the event. That is actually what I was actually going to go ahead and predict as well. Um, but you had to go and steal my thunder, so. Yeah, man. I got. It's all about me. What's wrong with you guys? It's all about me. <laughs> Damn it. Damn. I was super excited for that. Oh well. It's still. Yeah. Regardless, if we all if we see Metroid, we're all winners here, right? For sure. So yeah. I think there's a lot of talk about it. It's possible. So hopefully we'll see something. We're definitely not gonna see two Metroids though. There's that. That I just no. don't believe. No. I don't believe. Um. I mean, if I if I did, I'd be like. Right, I mean, if, if it happens, I'll be super happy about it, no doubt. And actually, what we talked about earlier about Metroid Prime 4 and Metroid Dread, now, I don't know if we'll have those names, but the idea that we'll get a 2D Metroid this year and a full-on 3D Metroid next year, it's a good business that. strategy, you know? That's yeah, not something that's Nintendo really wouldn't want to do. It's just a question of if they're ready. We may be a year removed from that plan. Like, maybe we get a 2D Metroid next year, and then we get the 3D Metroid. You know that that's, might be a safer I mean. bet, um, but I would I don't love think we're to any Metroid this year. Right? No, no, definitely not. Um, but I think we may get some sort of Metroid tease, and I think I'm 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 put I'm banking on it that Metroid of the Prime like series developed by Retro Studios, maybe with some help from an outside source on top of Nintendo, so they have a really huge yeah. budget team behind it overall. But it's going to be teased, not this year. It's coming at least holiday 2018, but it is going to be teased. Yeah. At the end of the I wouldn't even be surprised like if it came out 2019. I hope not. <laughs> or they didn't even say. They could. They could even. I could even see them not even saying a year. Right. I mean, if it's like the, it's if it's as big as Breath of the Wild, you know, maybe there could be a potential delay. I think I'd actually but, kind of prefer that just to know that they're working it, on it and they're right. not. They're they're taking their time and they're not rushing it. Right. As long I just want to see something for it. I don't need it soon. I just need, want to see something for yeah. it. And maybe, you know, Reggie they'll show... Say that we'll... Reggie yeah. said that when they asked, after the January presentation, they asked him, when will we see Metroid? He said, uh, come talk to me about uh, this next year and we'll see what happens. Right. Or we'll see what's happening. Yeah, but yeah. Th then again, they could always decide to have another event in January or November. You know, they've done yeah. that last few years where they have a, a Nintendo Direct that shows off a whole bunch of new stuff. And that actually could be what we're looking at here. We may eventually get accustomed mm -hmm. to not seeing a lot of new announcements at E3 and just seeing a lot of gameplay for announcements that have already been made. You know what I mean? So maybe January becomes a I month where be. we get all of our new announcements, you know? Like with I'd the down for that. Nintendo Switch presentation. And then in E3 is when we just get to see gameplay for these new announcements, you know? So this spotlight event may be more about seeing Xenoblade and Mario Odyssey rather than hearing yeah. about Metroid. And maybe we hear about Metroid and Fire Emblem next January, you know? Yeah. It could so, totally be that they start doing, like, two, like, E3-ish type things where in January they announce stuff for the first half of the year and then E3 is all about the second half of the year. Um, yeah, yeah so to a degree they already do that. that. So, you know, yeah. that that's, that's, not out of, that's not impossible for sure. So, uh, Sean, are you ready, or Brandon? Because I, I, I'm already down to one prediction. <laughs> you guys are just stealing them from yeah. me. Oh, no. My third one, I think. Okay. What is it? So, yeah. Just go. Um, so, I'm going to go, I'm going to predict the actual, like, how the presentation will go. And I'm going to say Mario is going to be the, the thing that opens it after Reggie does his usual, like, he talks for like a minute, like "Welcome to the presentation" and stuff, and it's gonna be like Mario. That's gonna be the first game we see, and then it's gonna transition to Rabbids, and then yeah. I'm, I'm not gonna say the order of these things, but I'm just gonna say we're gonna see um, Xenoblade trailer that's gonna confirm that it's coming out in October or November or December. Uh, probably December. Probably December. I think Mario's gonna be the Black Friday game. Yeah. And, uh, I agree. So I, I really do think the is going to come out this year. I think we're going to get like, one new announcement, and that's going to be the October slot. Yeah. Yeah. And um, we're going to. I think we are going to see the Fire Emblem Switch game a little bit because be uh, just a teaser or not? Because they already teased it way back in February. Right. It's not as big so of a megaton, so 
it becomes more possible, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, so I think, like, if they already teased it way four months ago, I think there's room for another tease now. Yeah. You know, they did say it's coming up this year. This year. Um, they, they may talk then, about it at the same time as Fire Emblem Warriors. Like, they'll talk about both within, like, a five-minute span. I can see yeah, that. Yeah, we won't see Yeah. That. Yeah, no, and, definitely. Uh, they're going to they're gonna close the presentation with, like, a really, really big game. Like, uh, like their next huge thing after Mario. Metroid. Uh, so I think it might be, yeah, it might be Metroid or Smash Bros. Or since they're taking Fire Emblem really seriously, it might be Fire Emblem. Uh, I just don't see it as, a, as an end I game. Don't. I, I don't. I don't see it. And part of the problem is that Fire Emblem hasn't been on the home consoles. It's been a big deal on the handheld. So if this was a 3DS focused direct, I would I would agree with you that Fire Emblem would have that chance to be that final climactic game to show. But because Fire Emblem hasn't been a home console focused franchise over the last decade, I don't think so. But maybe after this game, it will enter that conversation. And then maybe for the next Fire Emblem, that it's it is kind of more like a you know that that showstopper, that final game. So, but I don't think it's gonna be Fire Emblem. I do think there's a great chance I can show it off. I agree with you. I think um, Metroid is at least likely because Metroid, right? But Smash Brothers has a really good chance of being shown off if there's because they're gonna show something from 2018. Like we talked about maybe Pikmin, we talked about maybe Metroid, we've talked about maybe Fire Emblem. So those are three games that we think are probably you know if we know Pikmin. And, well, the only game we actually know is, is in the works is Fire Emblem. We're really confident that Smash Brothers and Pikmin are in the works. And then there's a hope that Metroid is in the works for next year. But we know it's going to eventually come, but we don't know how soon. So I think we think one of those four games will be shown off at the end of the show. Um, yeah, which I, one? I, I, Smash Bros. might be the safest bet, I think. Um, yeah. yeah. Like, I do. I really do think like the last game that they show in the spotlight is going to be like something big. Really big. My, my, because... my bold prediction is Metroid. You know, that's I'm just I'm going all in here, Metroid. But it could be something else. We could even have two, actually. I could see I could see two. Like maybe the Mario Odyssey is the beginning, and then towards the end we see that story DLC trailer. Maybe like a third way, or like the two third mark, and then maybe Pikmin or Smash Brothers or Fire Emblem, and then Metroid. We're not seeing all four. No way. We're gonna see two of those four, maybe. Uh-huh. Um, and yeah. I think we're gonna get one new IP. Yeah. Also, I don't know what it is. So it's not even it's not even in my predictions list. Because I'm not excited yeah. about something I don't know exists, but it, it, I think we're going to see one new IP. It may be more casual oriented. Um, I think Nintendo's yeah. going to want to have at least one casual oriented game. It may take advantage of motion controls. It could be cool. Um, I don't know what it is though, so I'm not really. It's not a part of my list, but yeah. So that'll be somewhere in the spotlight event too, I think. Yeah, I, I, I for some reason didn't even think of that. Right, because like, we don't know what it is, so why we we don't think about it? Yeah. Yeah, it's like they have to show something new, right? In my opinion, like it just—I don't think it'll be a big deal. Nintendo, but... Yeah, uh, I don't think we're—I I don't think we're going to see another Arms or Splatoon kind of thing this year. No, no, maybe next year. Like yeah. you know, like an exciting new IP. That's what I'm guess what I'm getting at. Like not that this new IP won't be exciting. It's just going to be more casual oriented, like the Wii Sports One yeah, Two like Switch how- sort of audience. Actually, or it could be like, oh, Brave Oasis is technically a new IP, but it's not like a huge thing. Right, well, that, part well, of the I'm problem is that you... since it's new, it's not considered a huge thing. You know what I mean? Like, for example, Xenoblade yeah. is not that new anymore, but because it's not, hasn't been around for like the other big games like Mario and Zelda, fans don't hype it up as much. So it's not treated as big of a deal because there's not as much hype for it because it's newer um, and less familiar. So... You know, maybe it is a big deal, and we don't know it until it proves it stars. So we'll see. Um, I think, arms. yeah, arms. Like arms is looking like the next platoon. Um, they're treating like it, like treating it like that. So we'll yeah. see what happens with that. But um, yeah. So I still, I still have one prediction left, but it's not even, it's not even a big prediction anymore. Um, so I'll just go ahead and say it. Maybe I'll come up with something else exciting before we're all done with the predictions. Mario Odyssey steals the show. That's it. Like Mario Odyssey is gonna come. And it's going to amaze us almost as much as Breath of the Wild amazed us last year. It's going to be like a showstopper. It's going to be incredible. People are going to be super hyped about it. And in fact, Mario Odyssey may start the spotlight event, but we may even... 
this could be a little disappointing, but we may even have to see the show ending with Mario Odyssey as well, like an additional gameplay trailer. That's not, I don't think that's impossible. I would prefer yeah. something new, but that may also happen. So that's just sure. something to consider. Right. But regardless, I am super confident about this. We're all going to see Mario Odyssey, and it's going to amaze us. So even if we don't get to see yeah. Metroid or Smash Brothers or Pikmin, Mario Odyssey is going to be there, and it's going to be awesome. It's going to be really, really, really good. That's my most confident prediction, actually. And it's an exciting one, because yeah. we already know we're getting Mario Odyssey. That's 100% confirmed. It's definitely coming out this year, and probably November, if not November, October, one or the other. And it's going to be really, really, it's going to look really amazing. Like, it's going to blow our minds. That's how good it's going to be. We're, we're looking at the next Mario 64. Like, that's that's how hype-worthy this game is going to be. I'm not hyped about it yet, but I'm pretty confident by the end of E3, I'm going to be so hyped about it, I'll be jumping off chairs and stuff. So I agree completely, yeah. 100%. Yeah. yeah, I don't think there's any way that Mario Odyssey gets shown and it's not just like amazing yeah and it's, it's kind of hard to to i don't know personally it's weird i just haven't been looking forward to it i don't know how or why but i know once i see it it's just gonna blow my mind um yeah so yeah that's what i think um anyways my prediction list is done i may come up with something interesting but uh do you got what do you guys have left brandon i feel like it's been forever since you talked about one of yours so how about you go hi my fourth one's kind of, kind of you know, chill, just kind of safe. And it's just that Smash Bros. will be shown. There will be a trailer, but, but it won't be released uh, until like late 2018, mid to late 2018. But they will show it. I also agree that Smash won't come out until mid to late 2018 because I think that it's gonna be like the big E3 game next year. That's my opinion. Yeah, there's too many multiplayer games coming out this year for Smash to also come out because that's all their big like multiplayer games. Huh. If they come out with everything in one year, then they have nothing left. Yeah. Actually, like, you know, I think the summer 2018 argument is a pretty solid one. And Brawl came out during summer. Yeah. And I think 3DS Smash Brothers came out during summer as well. So I think summer is actually a really good time for Smash Brothers. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I agree. Well, I think the 3DS one was supposed to come out in summer, but they delayed it to, like, uh, early oh, really? fall. Yeah, I don't think yeah, there's any yeah. way that this Smash Bros. would be delayed because they're going to be basically reusing the Smash Bros. for Wii U engine. Yeah, I, it doesn't. I don't even see it really needing any optimization because it already ran like 1080p 60 frames per second with like eight characters. So you know, yeah, that game doesn't need any optimization. It could maybe they improve the graphics a little bit, a little bit, but I don't see how they will because it already looks as good as it should. <laughs> if that makes any sense, but. Um, yeah, I, I don't think this Smash Bros. will be delayed. It's just a matter of when they think it's the best time to release it. So, so I, yeah, maybe yeah. summer summer 2018. If, I, if I'm if i wrong about early 2018, I would, I'd say my next guess would be summer 2018. So I wouldn't think it'd be early 2018. I think it'd be mid to late. I just think that they need to have a game early 2018. And maybe you just suggested Pikmin. Maybe Pikmin takes the slot as early yeah, 2018. Yeah, I think Pikmin's that. Pikmin's gonna be that yeah, game. Yeah, but I think Nintendo really wants Pikmin to try to have Pikmin. one big game coming out every month. So that may become... I think Pikmin typically comes out in spring. Doesn't it? Right. Pikmin typically comes out in spring. It's interesting. Um, maybe. Uh, the thing is, is that... I, re I think that's how it works. I don't remember. They're, I mean, right now they have a lot of remakes coming, but my thinking... Actually, you know what? I'm gonna make this my prediction, and I'll, I'll, I'll save it for the end, because I want to have something at the end. And uh, so, who wants to go with their next mm -hmm. prediction? Um, I'll go because I made the mistake of grouping in a couple of them with the last thing I said. So, um, this is, I think it's my last one. Okay. So, uh, so my prediction is that there'll be a lot of, not a lot, but a few, like, safe third-party games. Like, they're just simple ports. Maybe they're, like, they're missing features. Like, the new FIFA is going to be missing features. They're just like some third party games and they're not very exciting like how Monopoly was announced. Like things mm. like that. Like, eh. Like they're kind of cool. Can I, I tell guess, you one game but... that I think is kind of exciting that I'm pretty confident is going to be announced at E three? Call of Duty? Yes. I think Call I of Duty so. I think I Call agree. of Duty Switch is almost a guarantee. I, I think Call of Duty and Assassin's Creed will happen. Uh, well, Assassin's Creed they apparently happen. won't happen. Um, they apparently confirmed it won't be coming. So I'm less inclined to believe Assassin's Creed is coming. But, that wouldn't, you know, if they announced it, I wouldn't 
I wouldn't, you know, freak out I'd about it. Shocked. Like they had an Assassin's Creed on the Wii and the Wii U. Right, but that's back when Ubisoft, you know, was all in on Nintendo and the Wii U completely sucked. So I think they got burned by that, and they're more cautious now. And apparently Assassin's Creed's a pretty high budget. But the thing is, yeah, the Wii U is actually, you know, that Assassin's Creed was kind of high budget then too, and, you know, like, yeah. Wii U still ran it. So they could totally get the Switch to run Assassin's Creed. I think it's bullshit that, oh, I don't care. Anyways, like, I think it's complete <laughs> trash that this argument that the Wii Switch can't really run it. I think it totally can. They're just not putting forth the effort. The argument is that, they're, that the next Assassin's Creed is a much bigger, higher budget, grander scale kind of game. They totally could do it. That's garbage. Like, they can totally do it. I mean, like, yeah. what? Skyrim was on the 360, right? Like, come on. They can totally get it to run on the Switch if they wanted to. Like, I remember that, you know, they made Resident Evil 4 the best looking game of that generation of the early 2000s to run on the PlayStation 2. Obviously, there was some yeah. changes that needed to be made, like significant changes, but the game ultimately looked pretty much the same, and it ran on the PS2 eventually. So, that's garbage. It's coming down more towards money and timing. If they just don't think that there's enough of an install base or an audience, or they don't think they have enough time or a budget to do it, that's why it's not coming. It's not really a power issue. However, there is something to be said that maybe the Switch isn't so strong that it can't run it easily and it needs optimization, and that's the argument yeah. they can make. They just don't, they're not willing to put it forth the amount of time that it takes to get it to run well on the Switch because they just don't think it's worth the investment yet. But it's not, it's not impossible. But anyone who thinks it's impossible doesn't know what they're talking about. Yeah. So. I think there's no way... Some people are saying, oh, it's supposed to have, like, a huge world. There are games that won in the Wii U fine with gigantic worlds. Zimmy Chronicles X is a world three times bigger than The Witcher 3. It's, like, 12 times bigger than Skyrim. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Zelda Breath of the Wild, another game. Huge world. There's no way... Like, some people are like, oh, it doesn't have enough RAM to run open world games. Like, what the hell are you talking about? The Wii U had two gigabytes of DDR3. The Switch has four of DDR4. I just want to re reiterate that Skyrim ran on the 360. Uh, yeah. So, you know, open world games have been on systems far or less superior for a long time. Now, obviously, there were issues, but the fact of the matter remains is that it just comes down to optimization. And that they don't yeah. think it's worth and it's hard yes, it's harder to get a game like uh, you know, like something that's running on mech settings on a PC or whatever. It's hard to get something like that to get to look similar on the on the Switch. That's true. Because it's not as strong. It's that's a fact. But it's not impossible. It just comes down to is it worth the amount of time and development resources to get it to run well enough on the Switch. And that's that's the real argument here. It's not that it's not strong enough. It is. It just comes down to optimization and development resources. So, uh, I don't know. I, I don't. I honestly, I kind of believe that Assassin's Creed's not coming out this year for Switch. I believe that because um, it's been said it won't, and I don't think they're they're bullshitting us. But maybe we'll get a port six months later. I can see that. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. So, or, does anyone else have any predictions? Actually, that was pretty much my last one. Was okay. Sean, I think I cut you off like a little bit about the Call amazing. of Duty. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, actually, since we're on the subject, uh, Sean, do you have anything else to say about that that topic? No, only three. Okay. Let's see. All right, so actually my final say words on that, which this is not part of my prediction list, but is that I think if you watch my E3 predictions of video, you already know where I'm headed, maybe. But my bold prediction in terms of third-party stuff, we're going to see Dark Souls 3 announced at E3. Um, not Overwatch. I want it, but no. We're going to see Dark Souls 3, though. That's coming. I think it's developed by Take-Two Interactive, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and they're supposedly developing for the Switch. But anyways, I'm, I'm not 100% sure if it's Take-Two Interactive, but the development team that's working for Dark Souls 3, uh, that works to develop Dark Souls 3, is on the development list of, of partners that are working for Nintendo Switch. And that's pretty much the only game they work on. And there've already been interviews suggesting that they that they may do that on the Switch. So and it also could probably run on the Switch, and it's a perfect fit for the system. So I think we're gonna see Dark Souls three on the Switch announced at E three. And it's gonna be a pretty big game to have on the Switch. And we're also getting Call of Duty. So yeah, on top of like some sport games announcements and maybe a couple other little things, that's pretty much what we're gonna get with third party support. But I think Dark Souls three and Skyrim and Call of Duty, those three games and FIFA 
are going to go a long ways towards, you know, really making a lot of fans feel a bit more confident about having a Switch to care about the other platforms as well. So, anyways, that's what I have to say about third-party support. And uh, I have one more prediction. And this is kind of more about, like, a long-term thing. But we will kind of get a better idea of it after watching the Spotlight event. And basically, what it looks like, at least for this year, is that Intel's going to have a big game coming out every month, right? So... I think going into next year, we're going to see enough to convince us that that's still going to happen. And as the 3DS is dying out, they will start moving more resources onto the Nintendo Switch and just have, having all their development teams working on the Nintendo Switch games. So what that means is they'll have more teams working, making more games. So that means they have more games. So with all those resources put into one system, they'll actually be able to have a relatively major game come out every month. And hopefully for the, almost the rest of the system's life cycle. Like, maybe not every month, but most months. So maybe we'll get, like, 10 major games every year, you know? On top of little things spread throughout, and hopefully better third-party support. So that's my prediction, and it's not really an E3 prediction per se, but I think when we see a spotlight event, that'll become a little bit more clear. So that's what I think. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I, 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 I was going to have, like, an honorable mention section, but I think I kind of like mentioned a lot of the things I was sort of thinking throughout. Like I brought up Dark Souls and things like that and Call of Duty. Yeah. So is there anything else that you feel like we guys missed that we should talk about? No. Um, I kind of want to mention Skyward Sword HD just because uh, uh, it seems like they're really going for the HD remix of Zelda. But I just don't think they'll be shown at this E3, which is why I didn't put it in my list because... We're getting the Zelda DLC this year, yeah. so it wouldn't make sense for them to okay. talk about... A I could see that next year, though. Year. That'd be pretty cool. The Star Wars Sword yeah. HD next year. Um, Especially since you got the Joy-Cons with the motion controls, so they can do uh, button controls or right. motion controls. Yeah, I think what they would do is that they would rework the engine so they can work with traditional controls. But you would still have the option of playing Sky Wars Sword out. Maybe even improve it a little bit with the Joy-Cons since the motion controls are more advanced. Mm-hmm. And they, yeah, I think that could totally work it's yeah. definitely doable, but they would have both control styles, and it would look really good in HD. Like, they would maybe up the textures a little bit, work on the lighting system, and it would make Skyward Sword look amazing. Yeah. Have you and seen hopefully, the they would speed up some of the... What? What you Have say? you seen the screenshots of, like, the dolphin emulator playing this game? It looks ridiculous. It good. looks really, really like, good. It looks so yeah. good. Yeah, definitely. Like, it's ridiculous. It's super... It's a beautiful game, and an HD could look amazing. I mean, Wind Waker HD looks amazing. They took a great-looking game, and they modernized mm-hmm. it very easily. It's something similar could happen for Skyward Sword HD. But I... Same, if you consider the DLC this year, there's no way we're seeing that this year. No way. Next year, maybe. So... Yeah. I would like yeah. to see it, though. The insane thing about Wind Waker HD is the fact that they didn't even change most of the textures. Like, most of the textures are the exact same. Like, if you compare the two... They're pretty much the exact same. They're just higher, uh, you know, they're just up Yeah. So they're the same textures. They're just in HD, which is insane. Like, the game looks, like, nine-day different. But the biggest difference is just they changed, they fixed the coloring, and then they added, like, a crap ton of really good lighting. What, what's what's funny change, is like, that they may have actually put Skylar. more effort into Twilight Princess HD, which is um, really yeah. funny. So, because Twilight Princess HD does not look anywhere near as good as Wind Waker HD, but they probably put more time and effort into it. And that has, it's all based on the art style. So, you Honestly, know. art styles just don't hold up from back then. Yeah. But they did so much more with, with uh, Twilight Princess. Like, they changed so many textures, and, but it still didn't end up looking, like, nearly as big yeah. a jump as people were hoping. Yeah. Yeah. Which I think is kind of... You know, not Nintendo's fault. I mean, they put the they put even more effort in, but people were still salty about it. It's ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, they just literally added new HD textures to everything. But I think there's they could have done more. And the problem is that when you saw that like that demo that was in the style of Twilight Princess, like that looked amazing. That's what people wanted, and we may not get that anytime soon. I would love to yeah. see something like that. In fact, I've heard some. I think when I was watching Nintendo mm-hmm. voice chat. A uh, pretty good podcast, but I hope ours is better someday. Someday. It's going to take a few years, though. Um, <laughs> they were ta- brought up with the potential of having, like, maybe Majora's Mask 3D or Ocarina of Time 3D, like another remaster. But that would take a lot of work. But if they ever do that someday, I would love to see it in the style of that Twilight Princess um, demo that we saw for the Wii U. Like, if they ever got a game to look like that, that would be really cool. I mean, Breath of the Wild looks amazing, but I would, you know... 
maybe they use the Breath of the Wild engine and just have a slightly more realistic look to it and run it for Ocarina of Time. That'd be really cool. But, you know, they, we're, we're kind of yeah, just talking about that. stuff that's not going to come anytime soon. Like, this is ever. 2018 <laughs> at the earliest, if ever. You're right. Like, we may never see that. So, yeah, I you know, I but based on E3, because that's, you know, what we're talking about here, I... The Pokemon Direct did kind of settle me down a little bit. It did kill my hype a little bit, I'm not going to lie. But if we go over some of the predictions here, the idea that Pokemon Stars is a separate game from Ultra Sun and Moon, that's a really cool... I, I, I'm kind of proud of myself for coming up for that idea. Sorry I'm tooting my own horn here. I just I don't mean to toot my own horn. I'm just really excited. I came up with it as I was coming up with this list, like right before the show. And I'm just really excited about that possibility. Now, it's incredibly unlikely. Don't, just let me get that started. I don't want to... You know, put any ideas in any people's heads here. But the idea that Ultra Sun and Moon is not Pokemon Stars and that Pokemon Stars is an entirely other entity and it's coming for Switch, that's so cool to me. Like, I that would be an amazing thing. And if we saw that at E3, that would, you know, completely... That would blow my mind. But that's not going to happen. Um, but, you know, just it's a cool idea. The idea of Metroid Dread happening, that is like a 2D Metroid. That's really to kind of warm us up for the next big prime like metroid that's also coming hopefully developed by retro studios also really exciting the idea that pikmin 4 um is in the works and we may see that early 2018 that's really cool and you that's know what insane. that's probably the most believable thing we've talked about right here and i'm um, oh, sean sure. you brought up overwatch with like nintendo skins and stuff like that that would be an amazing thing to see. And I think we could see something like that next year. Definitely not this year. Like this I no. I'm willing to bet money on that for sure. But next year? Like that's that's cool. You know? So, you know, I'm excited for this E3. If for nothing else, Mario Odyssey. Mario Odyssey is going to impress the hell out of us and I I can't wait. So do you guys have any closing thoughts or anything else you want to bring up before we end the show? I just cannot wait. Like, oh my god, it's like only five days away. Yeah. Like yesterday, it was like months away. Like, eh. It's yeah. Like totally. Five months from now, but now it's like right here. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah, it's absolutely insane to think that in five days that we will see Nintendo's E3. Like, that's absolutely insane. It feels like just yesterday we got our Switches in our hands, and it feels like the day before that was January 12th when they were showing it off. Like, it's absolutely insane. Like, the other day, I was just, like, literally thinking about doing a predictions video like this one. Uh, and I was like, well, no, I don't have to do that for, you know, like, a couple, another couple of weeks. Because, you know, E3's not for, you know, like, a month or two. And I was like, E3's literally, like, next week. And I was like, what? My mind was blown. Right, because like, everything has happened so like, quickly. Because we gosh. waited. We felt like we had to wait so long for the Switch to come. But when January came around and we got to see the nintendo switch it was like lightning right and then march came around yeah. and then you know then mario kart and then now we got all this arm stuff and the test fires for splatoon and arms and then all this talk and the pokemon direct which broke my heart and now we're here and now we're <laughs> just a handful of days away not even by the time you guys are watching this you know it'll be a day or two before the event and here's the thing i do want to i i've seen a lot of these where people lowering their expectations trying to lower people's expectations and i don't want to do that but I'm going to do it anyways because, you know, I don't want people to get overly excited. Um, because yeah, this is focused on 2017 stuff. So most of what we've seen or heard about that's announced already, that's probably, for the most part, what we're going to see. But there'll be a couple new things, hopefully some yeah. third-party announcements. But as I said before, we're going to see Mario Odyssey, and that's going to be a huge game. I think Mario Odyssey is going to be really special, guys. It's going to be almost as special as Breath of the Wild, but nothing will ever be as special as Breath of the Wild. Well, maybe for the, maybe the next Zelda. But, you know, actually, hopefully there's that DLC I talked about. So, you know, so much to be excited about. I can't wait. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what you guys think of our predictions in the comments below. Did you like this format where we had, like, super positive ones that weren't necessarily realistic and then super negative ones that also weren't necessarily realistic and then kind of your middle-of-the-road predictions. So I hope you enjoyed everything again, guys, and uh, let me know what you think. Tell me what you want to see or ask any questions in the comments below. We'll try to get back and maybe we'll have a, we'll definitely have a video after this talking about our predictions, going back and seeing what could have happened, what's realistic, what wasn't, you know, and kind of just comparing to see what we got right, what we got wrong. So anyways, everyone, thank you so much for watching. See you later. Bye guys. Bye.